Hi students. Now I am going to explain the most crucial event in this chapter, the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. That is post fertilization events in angiosperms. In post fertilization events, endosperm development takes place before embryo development. This is because endosperm is a nutritive tissue and nourishes the developing embryo. Endosperm is developing from the primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid that is 3n number of chromosomes. During fertilization when the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei a triploid nucleus is produced and that is the primary endosperm nucleus. Initially the endosperm development is free nuclear. Only later cell wall formation takes place. For example, one very simple example is the water from tender coconut is free nuclear endosperm whereas the white kernel is a cellular endosperm. Soon after endosperm development, embryo development starts. The development of the embryo is called embryogeny. You just understand the different stages of the embryo. The zygote will develop into the pro-embryo. Then globular embryo, then comes heart shaped embryo and finally the mature embryo. So the different stages of the embryo are pro embryo, globular embryo, heart shaped embryo and mature embryo. The parts of an embryo are an embryonal axis and cotyledons. A dicot embryo has two cotyledons whereas a monocot embryo has only one cotyledon. Now region of the embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons up to the plumule is called epicotyle and the region of the embryonal axis below the level of cotyledons up to the radical is the hypocotyle. In monocot embryo the plumule is protected by the coleoptile and the radical is protected by the coleorhiza. Now the ripened ovary or after fertilization ovary will develop into the fruit and the wall of the ovary develops into the pericarp which is protective in function. The different types of fruits are true fruits. True fruits means when a fruit is developed from a ripened ovary and false fruits are fruits that develop from parts other than the ovary. For example in apple the thalamus is developing into the fruit. Then there are dry fruits like groundnut and mustard, fleshy fruits like goa, orange and ma mango, parthenocarpic fruits. Normally fruits are developing from a fertilized ovary. But when fruits start developing from an unfertilized flower, such fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits. Example seedless grapes and banana. Now coming to the seeds. The seeds are developing from a fertilized ovule. The main parts of the seed are seed coat. Actually the seed coat are the integuments of the ovule. Cotyledon that stores food and the embryonal axis consisting of a radical and a plumule. There are different types of seeds. Some are endosperma seeds. Endosperma seeds retain endosperm Whereas non-endosperma seeds, the endosperm is completely consumed during embryo development. Another type of seed is the perisperm. Here you can see occasionally the nucellus remain persistent. Such seeds are called perisperm. Example black pepper. All of you are familiar with the term seed dormancy. That is seeds fail to germinate. That condition is called seed dormancy. And when conditions are favorable, the seeds start germination. Now what are the significance of seeds? Seed is the basis of agriculture. Another importance is the seed is rich in food reserves. Thereby the young seedlings are nourished 
until they are capable of photosynthesis. The seed has seed coat capable of protecting the young embryo. So these are the significance of seeds. Just like pollen grains, you should know the viability of seeds. The viability of the seeds also vary. Some seeds can remain viable only for a few months, whereas others can live for hundreds of years. One example is Lupinus articus, the seeds of Lupinus articus, excavated from Arctic tundra, germinated and flowered after a period of 10,000 years of dormancy. Another example is the seeds of date palm, Phoenix dactylifera. It remained viable for 2000 years. Now coming to the last part of the chapter, Apomixis and Polyembryony. Now what is Apomixis? Apomixis is a form of asexual reproduction. It is an asexual reproduction. There are different ways by which apomictic seeds are produced. The two different ways, two main ways by which apomictic seeds are produced are occasionally what happens is a diploid egg cell is produced. Normally egg cells are haploid. But a diploid egg cell is produced without undergoing meiosis or reduction division. When such an egg cell is produced that can develop into an embryo without fertilization. That is one way by which apomictic seeds are produced. Another way is the polyembryony. Some of the new cellar cells, the new cellar cells are the cells made up for surrounding the ovule. Some of the new cellar cells surrounding the embryo sac start dividing and protrude into the embryo sac and develop into embryos. So these are the two different ways by which apomictic seeds are produced. One is by the production of diploid egg cell and another is polyembryony. Now what is the significance of apomixis? As you know, production of hybrid seeds is costly. If these hybrids are made into apomix, no segregation of characters can take place and we can raise crops year after year. So that is all what you have to learn about the in the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Thank you. I will come with the next video lesson tomorrow.